Today I will take my newly built snowmobile camper out on the land. Senior Outsider joined me to lend a hand on the main leg of the journey. He'll drive, and I'll keep an eye on the sled while recording our progress. Wedges, blankets. I think that's everything. You can't think of much else you want. You got. You don't forget to get fire starting stuff too, like yeah. lighters. Uh, just bring them all out. We'll see how much we need. After taking inventory, packing up and strapping down, we were ready to go. We took our time on the first section of trail, as it was uneven in many places. Once we had passed through the thicker woodlands, we could finally pick up our pace along the main traces and open spaces. We eventually pulled into a small protected clearing within a cedar stand along the edge of a windswept glade.
Welcome to the Winter Outpost. The beauty of the sled shelter is that I can just as easily be somewhere else with it by the end of tomorrow. If I can pull the sled there, I can call it home. Although I had everything I needed to sleep and work out here, I wouldn't be able to stay this time around. That's because the day was nearing its end and I would have to run my dad home. The snowmobile camper is of course a one-man shelter. Maybe next year we'll build a second one so that my dad can join me, but I must be on my own for now. The wind grew stronger as evening approached. It came in big gusts that were becoming more frequent by the minute. It was then that I heard an ominous creak and groan coming from a dead elm, which loomed and swayed over the camper with each new gust. I wouldn't be able to sleep with that dead giant hanging over my head, so I would have to deal with it just as soon as I could. But as the weather began to deteriorate, we decided that it was best to leave things as they were in favor of hitting the trail for home. I would return the following day on my own. The new day brought new weather, sunny and calm. The first order of business was to deal with the elm. The reason why I couldn't simply move the camera out of the way was because I had it sitting in the only sheltered place from the wind. Plus, it'd be good to deal with a dead standing tree anyway. It had been dead long enough for most of the bark to have fallen from its branches. Even though I would be felling the tree away from the camper, I moved it out of the fall radius anyway, as a precaution.
With my escape route cut, I was ready to bring the tree down. The trunk was full of little boreholes from bugs, another sign of disease and decay. I'll return with my tractor in the spring to cut the tree into firewood for my grandfather. Maybe I'll even work out a deal with him to bring a section of it to my sawmill. I'm sure the diseased wood will reveal a beautiful grain. Well, the day was getting on and I needed to get a fire going. Here we have a balanced diet for the hard-working woodsman. Turkey bacon, beans, and rocks. The truth is, I will be using the stones to heat the inside of my camper for the night. I've kept them dry over the course of winter, so the chance of them exploding in a fire is probably slim, as opposed to stones freshly gathered from water, which would have a much higher chance of exploding in the fire. Anyway, stones are great for quickly absorbing heat and slowly radiating it back out, which makes them a perfect heat source for the inside of my shelter.
Once the rocks were hot enough, I placed them into two large ammo cans. A koi wolf had emerged from the tree line in the lower part of the glade and began to call. He'd only be the first of many wolf calls I'd hear that night. Reclusive by nature, it is extremely difficult to catch even a glimpse of these beautiful creatures. But make no mistake, they are here. This is a clip I filmed a couple years ago in the exact same spot the drone is flying over right now. I ended up leaving the lids off because they had a rubber lining and I didn't want the rocks to melt them, especially inside my shelter. Some ammo cans also come with a plastic coating on the handles, which should also be removed. The heat from the stones can easily melt them as well, which would obviously create some dangerous fumes. Not something I'd want, especially in a small shelter like this. Now that the rocks and my supper were properly cooked, I decided to temporarily quench the fire. I only had so much dry wood with me, and I wanted to save the rest of it till later tonight, when I would reheat the stones one more time before bed. Although it looks like I've just killed the fire, all I did was put a pause on it. The underlying embers will eventually melt through the snow and I will be able to restart it when needed. I closed the shelter to allow the stones to heat up the inside. It didn't take long before it had warmed to a cozy 17 degrees Celsius.
Just as I was setting my camera up to film the moon, I heard something rush right past me in the dark. I spun the camera around just in time to get a blurry shot of a ruffed grouse disappearing into the cedar thicket to roost. Did you see it? There would be no better place for it to hide, away from the reach of those hungry wolves. The rushing that I had suddenly heard was the wind from its wings as it passed right over my head. While I waited for the shelter to warm, I decided to go on a walk before bed. I grabbed my hunting knife and high-powered flashlight for the short hike. I had been wanting to explore a small trail I had discovered behind my shelter that day, and now was my chance. Before I left, I placed the stones back onto the rekindled fire to reheat. I was surrounded on all sides by a chorus of howls, and it was beautiful. There is no equal to the symphonies that the Lord composes through his creation. I can attest to that. Cedar stands are as dark as any forest can come, which is why I wouldn't have even attempted this walk without my lithium-powered through-night flashlight. Now, this episode is sponsored by Thrunight, but you can trust that whatever I say is of my own honest opinion. If I didn't believe in the quality of their products, then I wouldn't have accepted the sponsorship in the first place. Simple as that. If you were to take a quick look inside my shelter, you'd get a pretty good idea as to how much I rely on Thrunight flashlights, judging by how many of them I have hanging from my wall. The flashlight I've been using this time around is the TC20. Although compact, it is powerful. Most flashlights of similar size that can be purchased from a general box store usually max out at around 300 lumens. The TC20, however, has a max output of 3,800 lumens. The massive output of the TC20 is made possible by two main factors. Number one, it's high-quality second-generation Cree LED. And number two, it's high capacity 5000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. To put that into perspective, a higher end cell phone battery will be around 3000 milliamp hours in size. 
the TC20 is quickly becoming my go-to flashlight, not only because of its extreme brightness and longer runtime, but also because it casts its light in such a wide sweep. The TC20 comes with a holster, is impact resistant and waterproof, as standard for through night flashlights. And yes, the battery comes included. Another helpful feature is its strobe function, which can be used to disorient an aggressive animal or a human attacker. Anyway, for the rest of the episode, you'll see me using the handheld TC20 or my other through night favorite, the TH30 headlamp. As always, I'll include links in the description below for these flashlights and all the other equipment I use as well. You think I would have remembered my snowshoes. Here are the tracks of the grouse who flew over my head earlier. Sleep well, my friend, but I'm sure the wolf lullaby will be of no comfort to you. I, however, enjoy their sorrowful song very much. Tired of falling through the snow, I return to the camper to grab my snowshoes before heading back out. Much better. Here's an old set of coyote tracks. Why don't we see where they go? Somewhere I can't follow. Ah, uh, here's a familiar set of tracks. Home sweet home. I liked the ammo boxes because of their thin but tall profile. Their shape allowed me to place the rocks alongside my sleeping bag without sacrificing too much space. Although rocks can make good thermal batteries, I still had some concerns with them. I had to put great care into making sure that the ammo boxes didn't make direct contact with my sleeping bag or anything plastic, especially for the first couple of hours when the boxes were at their hottest. Thank you. 
Once I had insulated the boxes with a thick towel, it was safe enough to touch, and therefore safe enough to have my sleeping bag against. Although the heated rocks are much safer to use in a shelter than fire, I figured there must be an even safer method. So next time I stay out here, I will use water as an alternative thermal battery to heat my camper with. I know it will be much safer, but I'm curious to see how efficient the water will be in comparison to the rocks. Anyway, I placed the rock radiators in the camper at 9.30, and they held the temperature steady at 17 degrees Celsius until midnight, peaking at 18 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes at one point. After midnight, the temperature slowly dropped into the wee hours of the morning, but by then I was already warm and snug, sound asleep under the covers. Ventilation is a must, especially in a shelter like this, so I installed two vents, one in each peak, I also left a gap for fresh air above the door. As I placed my hand near these vents, I could feel warm moist air leaving through the top vents and cold fresh air seeping in from above the door. Next time I stay here, I will add some hot water jugs in with the rock radiators. I think it'd be a good experiment to see which system is best for keeping my shelter warm throughout the night, especially during those really cold nights we experience in the dead of winter. At this point though, winter is drawing to a close, so it certainly wasn't as cold as it could be. <clears throat> well, good morning everyone. Uh, it uh, was a pretty good night, actually. I slept pretty good once I got in here and got settled. Uh, it is minus one degrees Celsius outside, and it is nine degrees inside. Hold on a moment. Let me make a coffee first. Uh, I've had a really good night in here. Uh, I've been really warm and I've been really comfortable and I've done winter camping before uh, where I've stayed in snow huts or, or they're also known as Quincy's and I have stayed warm in them for the most part but there's always a little edge of cold uh, that you can never get rid of and so you just try and get through the night and, and uh, you can do it but uh, there's just not that feeling of of comfort when you're inside a, uh, a snow cave basically although it is doable. But my point is that in here, it's just comfortable. Uh, I had no issues with sleeping. Uh, there wasn't that edge of cold at all. It was just really nice in here. So uh, for what I'm used to sleeping in during the winter time, this is like staying at a five-star hotel. This is really, really nice. The rock radiators did a really good job at, uh, at radiating their heat. As I feel them right now, they are a little bit warm, but uh, they've obviously given off most of their heat over the course of the night. What I really like about the rock radiators is that they do such a fantastic job at giving off an even heat. I mean that uh, spatially and as well as over time. Whenever I have a burner in here, which can only be for a short amount of time, because I don't like having open flames in such a small space, but whenever I have my burner on in here, the heat will just rise to the peak here and it'll be really, really hot here where, around where my head is. But as uh, it gets lower down to where my feet are, it's noticeably cooler. Uh, and so with flame, the heat just rises right to the top. And so most of it just gets trapped in the peak here before it releases off. And so it's just such an uneven dispersal of heat. And of course, I sleep on the ground. So if this shelter were to be heated by uh, flame, which it's not, and I don't want it to be, but if it was, it would be a shame that most of the heat would actually rise to the peak and, uh, and I would be sleeping down on the ground where it would be cooler and I'd be missing a lot of the benefit from that heat. But uh, with the rock radiators, I noticed that the heat dispersal was incredibly even. From the peak all the way down to the floor, the temperature was the same, which I wasn't expecting. But uh, it's nice that uh, the radiators here can be on the floor. And so they radiated sideways into me and also just into the space here. And so 
they kept, like I said before, the, the temperature in here at an even rate for the first three hours as well, right at 17 degrees. And that was about short until shortly after midnight. And then after midnight, the, uh, the heat in here slowly started to decrease just degree by degree. So even the heat loss wasn't all that fast. Uh, and if, again, if I were to have this space heated by a flame and I were to turn that flame off at some point, I know the heat would go from here a lot quicker than if it uh, were to leave from these rocks. So probably halfway through the night is when the temperature finally dropped down to about minus, or sorry, plus eight degrees Celsius in here. But uh, now that I've gotten up and I've gotten out of my sleeping bag and out of my blankets, the temperature has risen back up in here to 11 degrees Celsius. So even by me just getting up and uh, getting out of my sleeping bag, the temperature has risen by three degrees Celsius. This shelter can be outfitted for uh, even more uh, cold weather. I have one inch foam board insulation all around me on the floors, uh, walls and ceiling, but I can easily add another inch of insulation uh, just by putting it on over top of everything and that would hold the heat even more. So that would make these, uh, these rock radiators even more efficient. Uh, so we'll see what I do with this shelter in the future. But uh, as of right now, I'm really happy with the way that it is. Moisture in here has been pretty good. Uh, there was only a very thin layer of moisture on the roof this morning, uh, but not enough to make water droplets or anything like that. And that's because of the vents that I have installed on both ends of the peak here. There, there obviously was enough space for the warmer, moister air to leave the shelter during the course of the night. And as well, I did feel a, uh, a very slow draw of colder air from underneath. So I had uh, a supply of fresh air coming in here and the moist, uh, warmer air was seeping slowly out of the top, which was good. So it meant that I had proper ventilation in here. Anyway, I'm really excited to keep improving upon the shelter. I think the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, install a solar system here uh, so that the shelter can be completely uh, self-sufficient, which would be really nice to see. I like to get a nice big battery, get a solar panel on the roof or somewhere on the shelter uh, so that it is always resupplying its power. And so I don't have to keep running power banks out here. It'll just be able to power anything that I have. It would be nice if I could power maybe a small uh, heating pad on the really cold nights. I could put a heating pad inside of my blankets and, and generate heat that way. And I think that would be a really great use of, of uh, a solar setup here is just using it as a clean way of warmth. And as well for me, I need batteries out here to recharge my cameras, to recharge my flashlights. Uh, because I'm using them all day. I can hear a, a wolf howling out there right now as I'm talking. Uh, it, it was a pretty crazy night with uh, hearing all the howling. Uh, it was all around me and it was very close. Uh, so that was really neat to hear. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to get up and get going now. All of my winter clothes are outside right now and they are freezing. They're literally frozen, probably. <laughs> uh, the reason why I didn't bring my winter clothes in with me is because I didn't want to bring all that moisture that they carried in here with me uh, because I didn't want that moisture being released in this small space uh, because then I probably would be having issues with condensation. So that'll be my coldest part of this whole trip is getting outside and getting in my winter clothes. I brought a solar panel out with me this time around. My next job is to find a system that works for it.
These tracks belonged to the koi wolf who was howling from the lower end of the glade last evening. Happy trails. Until next time, my friends.